that I say no probably like 90% of the time to yes, because I'm very clear about, hey, this is my end goal. Is this speaking engagement going to have the right target audience who want my product? All right, guys, welcome back to the Your Marketing Secret Show. And today we have a very special guest, Michelle from Singapore, all right? And Michelle is a very successful mom prono. I've been following Michelle for a while. I love how she actually creates her content and uh, how she aspires people, inspires people to really like start their own business in a way. And she has a lot of very interesting courses. We just talked about that just now. And uh, it's really a very, very uh, so-called interesting case study I would really want to bring to you guys. And uh, yeah, welcome to the show, Michelle. Thanks for joining Hello, us. Hello, Jason. Lovely talking to you again. And thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, I mean, awesome. I mean, it's been a while since we last met, right? And uh, from our conversation just now, your business has evolved into a very interesting way. And I would love to learn a lot more from you. But before that, I mean, just jump right into uh, maybe the first question we have right now. Uh, seriously, this is the best, uh, you know, best time for us to learn about you. So what did you do before this? And how did you start doing what you do right now? So, well, what I do right now is that I have an academy where I teach women entrepreneurs grow their brand and visibility by building online assets. Um, we have multiple uh, programs online. And um, yeah, that's in an essence what I do right now. What I was doing before, I've been doing, I've done so many things in my life, but I suppose the start of the story, it comes from, um, I used to run a um, soup and salad bar in Singapore, soup an FMC business. Bar. Yeah, okay. so this is, I was married, but before I had a baby. And um, so then, yeah, the story is I had a baby. <laughs> now I'm a mother of three. Um, wow. But when my first baby came, I realized that I could not be in the F&B business anymore because it requires, you know, 13 hours a day. And, and um, sometimes you just have to be there. I, I could not because I have to be there for my child. And I decided that, okay, maybe I'll just wrap up my business to be there for my child and I'll just be a stay-at-home mom. So I tried the wholesale home mom gig for six months and realized that, no, I can't, you know, I, I, I need to be earning my own income, a sense of security and have a sense of purpose waking up beyond what would I cook today, right? What would I do with my kids today? Just something else that's more for myself. And I really had to figure out what can I do from home? And this is almost 10 years ago. And this is when people were still reading blogs and I'm like, okay, I was determined, I'm going to start a blog. And um, I had no experience writing, had no experience starting a blog or a website. Um, people were laughing at me like, what are you doing? Right? I, I read my very first blog post recently and like, so embarrassing, <laughs> like so many mistakes, right? <laughs> but anyway, so the blog evolved into a maternity concierge business, where I start wow. helping um, expecting parents plan the arrival of the baby because my blog was writing I was pretty much writing about my experience as a mom and I go through consecutive pregnancy and early motherhood and I you know just was really blogging about my life but what I did was just turning it into a consultancy like same knowledge just one-on-one -on -one and charging a lot more for it and so a lot of my readers were like oh wow how do you go from this stay-at-home mom and now you're like a businesswoman how, how did that happen um so then i'm like hey as you know being a business owner we're always like so excited to share and we're always learning as well like the latest marketing online marketing hack digital marketing here and there so i started consulting and i started helping other moms set up their own business um COVID came and just right before COVID, I had this idea of putting my program online anyway, the stuff that I used to work with people one on one that was also taking my time away from my kids, which defy the whole purpose of, you know, quitting my business to be a stay at home mom. So um, then, yeah, to what it is today. So it becomes an online program and that, you know, these days I work half a day and I still have a lot of time with my kids recently about a month my helper quit uh she was with us for eight years wow. and yeah so she left us for a month and um we haven't found a replacement yet but i still manage we still did you know two launches um last month it, revenue was better than ever and i felt that's something that i'm really proud of it's not so much what we earn 
is the fact that we could earn that much while not working as hard. Right, right. Yeah. And on top of that, because you have a very strong sense of purpose for your business, because you are really trying to empower, you know, like women entrepreneurs to let them see things differently and probably give them different direction or angles on how things can be done for them. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of them can see that life for themselves. They just don't know how and where to start. So like, I'm just sort of like a guide to nudge them along. Hey, next this step, next this step, where are you right now? So yeah, awesome. it, it's, awesome. a lot of, like, it, it's really fulfilling. I believe so. And let's focus on, uh, you know, like the, the current business model that you're having right now, which is Mum Boss hmm. Academy as an academy, right? Hmm. So all we know, I mean, I actually built my own academy as, as well in a way. Uh, and we both know that growing and online academy like this, as in like the learning program and all that for people is not easy. So what are the secret sauce? What are the things that you have done right, in your opinion, hmm. in the past few years yeah. through the pandemic up to now? that mm. actually created the success you have right now? I would have to say the fact that I'm able to not work as much and still have consistent leads and sales coming into the business is because of the assets that I've built over mm. the years. Even my blog, even my blog that I bought, built 10 years ago and I'm still writing about, I mean, those articles that I wrote five, six years ago, those are still getting readers. I, right, right, right. Exactly. Those are assets, right? So those are still getting readers. They go from one thing to another. They might check out my Instagram. They might check out my Facebook and see, oh, Michelle is now talking about this. And what I do is at the bottom of every um, blog post, uh, we kind of have a little lead. Hey, want to start a business from home? Click here. And we brought the Chill Moms reader into Mom Boss Academy. So wow. whether whichever stage you are, whether you know me since you know five years ago or you just knew me yesterday, we have multiple things out there right now that would capture your attention. And if you are the right target market, you would be eventually be led into our email list and then we'll continue to market to you. That's really it. Awesome. Awesome. So I think what you actually, yeah, I think you brought up is really correct because something that has been around for a while actually builds a lot of SEO juice to your current business. Yeah, absolutely. And would you suggest if anyone to, were to start an academy, they have to start doing, building something like that? I mean, people may not have that kind of time to actually do that. Do you think this is possible uh, for us to build this kind of like wealth of content or the, the assets that you mentioned just now in a very short period of time? Um, absolutely, absolutely. And then the thing is, you know, you probably would not need to write a blog right now. Yeah. And you could really just start a TikTok account and Instagram, but those are like, you know, instant, instant content to show people what your expertise are. And I like that, you know, you are building your YouTube channel and right, right. You know YouTube videos is also evergreen. Five years from now, people might be watching this video and it's still giving you that, you know, lead generation juice. Um, so you, everyone needs to start somewhere. Of course, it's not over the short period of time you get to what it is, but um, with Facebook ads, you do right. kind of like you are pouring fuel into the fire, right? Okay. You do need to have what you're selling first because a lot of people, what they did wrong is that they're like, oh, I'm just going to be an influencer. I'm just going to build my content, but they really don't have a lot of, like nothing substantial behind it to sell, mm. right? So okay. um, that was who I was, <laughs> right? Just like pumping up content, blog after blog, and we really don't have much to sell except writing for other brands but right now there is a funnel to my own products and regardless where you come from or which stage you are we'll get you <laughs> true true do you run ads michelle by the way yes i do run ads yeah we only run ads when we have a live launch though right yeah right yeah. i can see you're also very active on instagram does it contribute a lot to your funnel as well uh, oh, definitely, because I think it's also because I've built Instagram over a long period of time. So um, I do have a customer, no, not a customer, I think like an audience um, who are moms. They may not be ready right now, but if I consistently talk about it, you know, maybe in two years time, they are ready. That's when they will, 
they will start to, hey, Michelle, you know, sometimes I see people who would be in my email list for like two years before they finally sign up for something. I'm like, hey, where they come from? Then you check the record. They have attended that live webinar three times before. Wow. Yeah, sometimes it's just that the time is not right. So um, what I always tell my student is just don't give up. If you don't give up, you are not failing. Very just true. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Yeah. And, and, and I like what you mentioned just now, being consistent is really one, some, something that I actually learned from every one of the content creators or even entrepreneurs out there. Because uh, I think that people also need to feel, you know, like really build that trust in you. Correct. Correct. Like, you know, yeah. So if we're not consistent, even with just free content, how can you expect people to rely or trust you enough to deliver? Very true. Right? They haven't even bought from you yet. It's like, oh, sometimes she show up. Sometimes she's like, oh, I don't feel like it. And then two weeks, you don't see her on, on Instagram. Like every little thing like that, I think play a role in people's perception of what, whether you can deliver or not. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, just pluck a little bit. I mean, hope, hoping to, you know, get some hacks from you. I can see your <laughs> content is, uh, I mean, I would say it's quite a lot, you know, on your Instagram. Yeah, people think a lot, but I always feel like I don't do that much, you know. Exactly. That's what we want to know. How do you juggle? How do you plan your content? Is there any tips that we can actually learn from you on, yeah, on this part? Okay. So really, I only post on Instagram three times a week on the main feed. Okay, on the main feed, right? On the main feed, maybe three max four times a week. I don't post every day. Okay. Right. Um, and we just repost what I have. Sometimes, if it's relevant to the Facebook page, like repurposing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm not as consistent as you. I do. I do have a podcast which I probably post once every two weeks. All right. right. So twice a month. You can expect that from me. Twice a month. And every time I do the podcast, my team would chop it up. Okay. And then repost again on, on story. We drip it out. This today we talk about this part and then we show about that part. And then eventually all of those would also still lead you to a landing page where we capture right. your email. Um, yeah, and, and I think stories is just come so naturally to me. So I do do stories every day. And I focus on Instagram. I do. I try not to be everywhere. I like it. Like people do think that I'm everywhere, but my focus is just Instagram because when I post it on Instagram, it's auto posted on Facebook anyway. Yeah, true. Now it's actually yeah, very it's easy like, to auto post. Yes. Yeah. So it's like no, yeah, not not that much. So if I have a podcast, then maybe I'll send out. No, not maybe. I will send out um one or two newsletter to just tell people, hey, you know, here's some something that I just talk about. Head over and listen now. Right, right. So yeah, so I, I like the piece of advice that you just shared with us just now that don't try to be everywhere. Because sometimes when people are actually getting started, especially they feel that they are, they, they need to be everywhere. And, yeah, uh, then eventually they, they burn themselves out and they feel overwhelmed and they stop doing it. They just give up like that. Correct. Yes, and I yes. feel so demoralized because I yes. have a lot of people coming to me and say, oh, you know, I've been very consistent. I post every day and then there's not a lot of likes. So I give up. It's like, uh, okay. You know, do, do you expect to just go to the gym every day for two weeks and be super like ripped, True. right? No, it's I over like six months, a year before you finally see, hey, there is something here. So why do we expect like consistently every day like just just don't yeah don't try to be everywhere yeah and i and i believe what you mentioned just now one thing i picked was really powerful which is you got to really have something very solid to sell and yeah. in fact right a lot of times when when all these content creation and all that fail may not be because of your content it's actually because of the product that you know people may like your content but it's not really related to the product or it doesn't really lead to a product mm -hmm. that people want. Yes. That's also a fourth, you know. It's a, yeah, it's a yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 that's a very valid point. Another mistake that I see people do is that their landing page or their lead magnet has nothing to do with what they sell. Yes. And I actually, I can say this a lot because in the past two years plus, since the, through, the, through the pandemic until now, mm -hmm. I've created like 40, 50 lead magnets and I would say <laughs> at least 70% of them failed mm. because a lot of times we created things that we thought people want, but mm. it's all we thought people want, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The truth is people don't want that. Yeah, or maybe they want that, but then it doesn't like logically link to what you have to sell. 
Ah, yes, yes, yes. And that's another thing as well. Yeah, it's like, I, I, yeah, I opted in for this, but doesn't mean I want to start a business. <laughs> you know what I mean? True, yeah. true, true, true. Yeah. That's, why, that's why talking about academy, because this is related back to your business model right now, which is academy. I think that's a very important thing that we have to really highlight to anyone who's trying to start an academy or, you know, to teach online. Content creation, yeah. Content creation. Being a coach, right? Yeah. yeah, these are all moving elements. And I would yeah. say, in fact, your product is your marketing. Yeah, you gotta start with your product first. Mm. Start with the end in mind. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right. Awesome. Now I want to actually ask another question. Now, um, you know, it's been a while since you do this, and uh, if you actually were to start all over again, what would mm. what would you do differently? Um, I would not say yes. This like that many times like okay. the, the one of shiny you know object syndrome right right, right. Like, like you just mentioned oh my god you know something else oh my god i see my competitor doing this i feel like i'm doing this um that's and also like leaning into something that's just easy for us is like oh um let's say you know i get invited to host an, an event or i get invited to speak to an at an event while it it's, it does well, like it makes me feel, wow, people wanted me, it's good for my ego. I knew that that event, I may not even get any leads. It's just not my target audience. Very but true. I've said yes so many times to that okay. when I first started because I felt I, I wanted to be you know needed. Like when people invite me, I'm like, yes to this, yes to that, yes to this, yes to that. Even though deep down, I'm like, I don't think that it's the right thing for me. So now I'm very clear. Now I'm very clear. I say no, probably like 90% of the time to yes, because I'm very clear about, hey, this is my end goal. Is this speaking engagement going to have the right target audience who want my product? Are they going to let me talk about this? Or am I going to talk about, you know, motherhood or, or pregnancy, which I used to talk about, but it's yeah. no longer part of my, you know, plan right now so yeah just say no to a lot of things like stay focused yeah it's awesome. easy to say yes but yeah awesome and, no and i'm so glad that we are one of the 10 percent oh yeah 10 percent that you're saying <laughs> yes to <laughs> yes 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 well yeah. i always enjoy you know coming on your show jason so thank you so and I much fun from you as well i mean basically the next thing i would really like to actually pick your mind from here is like because i also would want to learn from your journey so much if if you were to like advise somebody you know who's going to start a journey like you like start mm. an online coaching mm. business or online co like mm. training business mm. um you know what are the advice you have for them if anyone wants to start right now usually when people come to me they're like oh whether they want to start a business or they want to build a personal brand as an expert in anything i would tell them to find out who they are really like find that clarity in that message because a lot of time people think they have to be a certain way right they become how to say um they become shaped by oh i see mm. someone else is you know starting a youtube channel and and it seems like they are um doing well in this something something so i felt like i need to be that oh i just got influence or I feel like a lot of time people who went through a transformation, especially, right, they may have gone through a life transformation. Yes, their life has changed. And so they become like, oh, since my life has changed because I just hired this life coach, I want to be a life coach now. But there's no like clarity. What's the deeper meaning in that? So I always encourage people to really dig deep, like sit still by yourself. Is this really what you want to do and what's unique about you? And so because it's easy to just get into the doing, right? We want to start a, an academy. Oh, I want to teach something online and just see, oh, what's out there? And then just pick another program. Then you're, you're just like the hundreds of thousands of coaches out there. Let, let's be honest, there's way too many coaches out there right now. And there's even coach who coach coaches. It's like, oh my God, right? right. What makes you unique? And I think over time like the big why like you always ask your your guests is why what's your big why what's what's made you unique what do you have gone through in your life that you think you can impart with people i think that's more 
um, put a, a, a sense of depth in, in what you are going to do and also would carry you for the long term. Because awesome. starting a business is not easy, right? Let's, let's just say it yeah. as it is. There's ups and downs, but if you have a deeper why than just simply, I just went through a life transformation, therefore I want to do it, then it's not going to last. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Wow, awesome. Um, before we go, uh, can we actually talk about your program? Is there anything, if there is anyone watching this and wants to work with you, is there any, mm. any, any, anything that you can recommend to people to start with you immediately and real quick? Okay, um, so if you are in fact a, a coach or you have started an academy and you want to build your personal brand online, I talked about you know building assets over time. So I have a program called In Demand where we help you uh, build the five assets you need so that you would gain consistent leads and easier to close, right? right. Um, to the five assets, which is number one, the clarity in communication. Are you speaking coherently? Are you producing content that is related to what you have to sell? Um, we built your personal brand, uh, personal profile across internet because you are who Google say you are. Because if I Google you, I cannot find you or you're someone else, I won't trust you. I probably won't have you coach me. Um, number three, we have content. Again, you know, what's our content you should be putting out. Uh, we cover your online, your offer ecosystem as well. Like, what do you have to sell? How do you create a bigger offer, a smaller offer, a whole package so that um, it makes sense for your business? Because one product is not a business. And also, um, the last thing is collaboration and partnership. How do you use partnership to grow your business? And those things, if you consistently produce them, I call them assets, because over time, you get to work less and let the assets work for you. Fantastic. And guys, don't worry, the link is already in the description. Thank you, and, uh, and all the ways to connect with Michelle is also in the description as well. So I think with that, we wrap this round. Thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us. And thanks for watching. Thanks, Jason. Thank you.